Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and today I would like to talk a little bit about combustion air, what is it, why is it important, and what is it for? And to better understand this, let's back up and start from the basics. Every gas or oil or wood burning appliance or unit or system, all those flames, they require air or combustion air to continue to burn. So in order for that flame to continue to burn while the unit is running, it needs combustion air or basically oxygen in the area that it can burn up in order for it to continue to burn and for the combustion cycle to keep going. Wherever the area is, where the appliance is, whether it be a water heater or a furnace or a dryer, or maybe they're all in the same area, like for me, for example, I got my gas dryer right there, water heater and a furnace all in the same location. So wherever they are, the area should be big enough where there's enough adequate air that it can use for the combustion cycle. Otherwise, the units will be basically starving for air and that can create a negative pressure inside of the house. And that is not a good thing. Usually that spells trouble. Most homeowners have no idea what combustion air is, and that's totally normal, that's okay, but sometimes it does cause a little bit of trouble. So actually, recently I went to a guy's house, and that's one of the reasons why I'm filming this video, and he asked me an interesting question, and I actually filmed a little video of his high efficiency furnace, his water heater, and the little supply combustion air intake pipe or the supply air pipe. And I'll just show you real quick what I was looking at there. So here's the mechanical room where the furnace is. And it's a high efficiency furnace, so it has the plastic PVC venting right over here. And the pipe with the sheet metal tape on it, that's gonna be the exhaust pipe. That's where the carbon monoxide test was done. And the other pipe is the intake pipe. That's where the combustion air or the intake air comes in. And over here we have the water heater. This water heater has a power vent, so an induced draft motor. It vents the exhaust fumes out through that pipe right there, and it sucks air in, combustion air, through the bottom right here, through that grate. And if we look over here behind the ductwork, there's a big flexible 6-inch pipe that's insulated. This is the pipe that brings in the fresh air, or the makeup air, for the furnace and the water heater. So this homeowner tells me that, hey, sometimes when it's really cold outside, this big air pipe, there's just a lot of cold air just, just pouring out of there. Is that normal? Can I plug that up with something? Or can I do something about this pipe so the air doesn't come out there like that? And that's actually a pretty normal question. Once in a while, I actually come to a furnace call where somebody didn't know what that pipe was. So they thought, hey, there's so much cold air coming out of there. I'm just going to go ahead and stuff a blanket or a towel in there to prevent all that cold air from coming in. And of course, a little bit later, I come out to investigate what happened and I find that. So that big pipe is actually there to bring the combustion air or fresh air inside of that room or facility or whatever place that it's in. And that fresh air is meant to be used by your flame burning appliances. So for example, on my furnace, this is a 80% furnace, steel vented. You see the grates up in front right here, or in front? Notice how it has all these grates in the front and on top. So basically whenever my furnace turns on and starts running, when the flames come on, the furnace is actually sucking air from the front and from the top. And then it's burning that up and it's going out the exhaust pipe. With a water heater, it's absorbing the air or basically sucking the air in from the bottom and then of course exhausting it out the top as well. And my house actually does not have one of those fresh air intake pipes and that's because my basement is very terribly insulated. In the winter it's super cold down here. Uh, the walls are not very well insulated, the windows are bad, so I can totally get away without having one of those pipes coming in here because there's enough cracks and gaps everywhere and this area is really huge, this work area. And there's adequate air for all of my flame burning appliances. And by the way, let's go back real quick to that guy's intake pipe. If you take a look at it, notice how there's a zip tie around it that kind of makes it go into a U shape. That was done by whoever installed the furnace so that most of that cold air is actually pooling up in there instead of just dumping onto the floor. In a lot of houses, I see that pipe just go straight down and it's just maybe like six inches off the floor, just kind of hanging there. And of course, when it's really cold outside, that's like a six inch diameter flexible pipe. 
cold air is just fuming out of there and their floors are all super cold. And sometimes I do get the question like, hey, can we do something about this? And yes, you actually can. You can either do that U-shape thing, like you saw in the video that I showed you, or you can simply put a five gallon bucket right underneath that pipe. Just make sure the pipe does not go all the way down to the floor of the bucket. Make sure that there's just a couple of inches, so it's a couple of inches off the floor. And then all that cold air is basically gonna pool up into the bucket. Whenever your furnace or your water heater turns on, it can actually suck that air out of the bucket and that's gonna be all the air that it needs to continue to burn and have a proper combustion cycle. So what happens if there's not enough combustion air inside of the room where that appliance is standing, the, burning, the flame burning appliance is? Or maybe somebody took a towel and shoved it into that supply air pipe and there's not enough air for the unit. What happens is the gas to air ratio gets messed up. So the gas pressure going to the unit is pretty steady, it stays at the same level, but if there's not enough air, the oxygen percentage drops, which causes incomplete combustion. This can decrease the life of your unit, cause the carbon monoxide levels to go up as well, which could be a dangerous situation. And lastly, it could cause your unit to start to backdraft, especially if you have natural draft units. So if you have an older furnace where it has that draft hood in front, especially if you see some discoloration in front of it, some stains and some rusting, that could be a sign of backdrafting. Or like on my water heater, this is a natural draft water heater as well. So if these rings right here are all melted up, mine are melted just a little bit, that's not too bad. Usually if you have a backdrafting problem, all these rings are just completely melted. And let's just stop on backdrafting for a little bit. So backdrafting, what happens is when there's not enough combustion air, when your unit is starving for air, there's not enough air for the flames, what happens is it starts sucking air from everywhere that it can, which creates a negative pressure inside the house. So if you think about it, if you think of your house as like a box, there's air that's streaming inside of the house. It's trying to get in whenever your furnace turns on or your water heater turns on, or maybe whenever they both turn on, air is trying to get into the house. It's going through all the cracks, through all the windows, wherever it can get in. The furnace is starving for air, so it's trying to suck air from wherever it can. That creates a negative pressure where air is going inside the house. Whereas generally, you want your house to be slightly positive where it's pushing air out. So for example, if my water heater is running, it's heating the water, and then my furnace turns on, if I don't have enough combustion air, my water heater can start to backdraft. So the water heater is sucking air in from the bottom, it's burning it, and then it's exhausting it through this steel vent right here, through the chimney. So all of that is just going right out. But when my furnace turns on, if I don't have enough air in this room, when the furnace turns on and the flames come on there as well, it's sucking air in through here. If the house is in a negative pressure, the furnace can actually start to suck in the exhaust fumes from the water heater right here and cause them to get blown inside of the house instead of going out of the chimney. And of course, that's pretty bad. And actually, my parents' house was a perfect example of this. They used to have an old Lennox natural draft furnace with the draft hood in front here. And there was a water heater standing right next to it as well. And they used to have that in a big laundry and mechanical room. And what they did is they remodeled that room, they split it in half, and they basically added another room to their house. And while they were doing that remodeling, they added the wall, so there's less cubic feet of air in that room now, in that furnace room or the mechanical room. They added a wall. While they were remodeling, they added more insulation. They got new windows. They insulated the ceilings. They basically buttoned it up. They tightened it down. So it was a lot more tight. It was a lot more insulated. There was not enough cracks and air in that room for the furnace. And it was a natural draft furnace. It was a natural draft water heater. So what was happening at their house is whenever the furnace would come on, it would run fine. But if the water heater came on at the same time as the furnace was running, the furnace would actually start to backdraft. So in their case, the water heater was actually sucking air in. There was a negative pressure in that room. And the water heater was actually sucking the exhaust fumes from the furnace right back out through that exhaust hood. So one time I actually, and I was already an HVAC technician at that time, I walked into that laundry room and I smelled 
a funky smell. You know, sometimes carbon monoxide, whenever there's incomplete combustion, you can smell it. The aldehydes in the air or whatever it is in there. It's a pungent smell. It's very, if you ever smelled it before, I think you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So anyway, I walked in there and I smelled that. And I'm like, dad, what, what smells? And my dad tells me, oh, the, the furnace is probably just acting up. If you just crack a window open, it'll stop doing that. It'll start venting normally again. Because I put my hand in front of that draft hood and I could just feel the hot air coming out. And of course, that's not a good sign. It should be going out the chimney, not back drafting like that. By the way, same with the water heater. If you put your hand right next to this draft hood right here, you should not feel hot air coming out. I know some guys used to take lighters. They would put a flame right next to it. And the flame, if it's drafting properly, it should be getting slightly sucked in to the exhaust pipe. If it's blowing back out, then you have a back drafting problem. There's a negative pressure inside of that room. So anyways, my dad tells me if you crack a window open, it'll start to draft just normally. And I told him, dad, that, that is totally not okay. We need to do something about this. So we also needed to make a hole in the wall uh, for the supply air to come in so that the furnace has enough combustion air, or basically there's enough combustion air for both of them, the water heater and the furnace, when they're running at the same time. But we ended up not having to do anything at all because at that point they pretty much like a week or two later they upgraded to a new furnace. They got a high efficiency furnace so that was no longer a problem because that high efficiency furnace had its own intake pipe. So it would suck air in through the intake pipe and the water heater was just fine with the air that was inside of that room. Well guys, and that is all I had for you about this combustion air topic. It might have been a little bit scattered but I just wanted to share it with you while it was fresh on my mind. I hope you learned something new from this, you got something out of this video. If you're a technician watching this and you have some other info that you could share with us or maybe some corrections to what I said, please let us know in the comments below or just any other general comments. Comments are always welcome. Sometimes the comments in the comments section are actually just as good as the video. There's some good conversations going on there. So definitely check that out. And the takeaway for this video, if you're remodeling and you're buttoning up your house, Keep that in mind, you may need some kind of a fresh air intake if you have a lot of gas burning appliances. If it's electric, like electric dryer and maybe your water heater is electric, then that might not be a problem. But if you have a bunch of gas appliances or propane appliances, that might be a problem for you. And also, if you have that makeup air or the supply air pipe, the flexible pipe coming in, definitely don't plug it up with anything. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the comment section. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, I've got a puzzle for you. And they actually claim that 99% of us will fail to get the right answer. I'm gonna be honest and admit that unfortunately I was part of that 99%. But let's see if you can get the right answer. If you believe that you tracked down the right bucket, let me know which number it is in the comments below.